Welcome back to Developers Home. Today we are discussing about IoT and we'll be understanding you know that if in case you want to design any IoT infrastructure so what will be your architectural design for that system. So before going much into detail I will explain that what is IoT in some simple terms it's Internet of Things. When your devices or sensors which is connected to internet so that is a basic understanding of IoT and before understanding architectural design we'll understand that what are the use cases so it will be helpful to understand so if I go to use cases there are on high level multiple use cases and you can see more than this okay one of the basic understanding if I want to give so let's understand that there is a a fridge which is installed in you know that different areas of one of the company and now they need to make sure that that fridge is having proper temperature so what can they do is they can install temperature sensor inside that fridge and that device and that sensor continuously send data to their owner that okay this is the current temperature of that uh, fridge and you know that they can set rule that okay if temperature goes down more than you know that uh, or 20 degree or if it goes more than like 20 degree it needs to send a lot so they can you know that go and repair that fridge so that is very basic uh, concept and basic you know that the use case but now if I go to my use case so I have designed smart energy meter so we have designed this smart energy meter for industrial purpose so they install this smart energy meter nearby their very big device and you know that this meter will continuously getting voltage and current data and then it can continuously send to cloud and they can analyze online that okay this is the current uses of that uh, particular device so we design for that use cases and now i will explain that you know that what are the design i have used so if i go to architectural design for that so it can be designed by a different ways by using different technologies but this is the design which i have used so let's go deep dive into that so as a base i have took linux as my uh, system and then i have deployed this uh, uh, like architectural design on aws server also uh, on a base i have a linux system so my platform is a linux system I have used MQTT as my messaging protocol and I use uh, Node.js for designing execution engine or for designing rule engine and I have designed I have used UiFi or Angular for designing my front end so you know that that front end can be accessed via mobile app or tablet or desktop application and for database I have used MongoDB DB for storing non SQL data and I also have MySQL for storing SQL data so this is my basic design and components which involve and on a MQTT I have used TLS and SSL for doing secure communication from device to my gateway so now if you go to a deep dive so my central component is gateway so on gateway we have installed MQTT server so what is MQTT so MQTT is a messaging protocol which use a sub and pop it uses subscribe and publish mechanism so for as an example let's say you are using Facebook and on a Facebook you are subscribing any page so now you are subscribing that page so when there is any update happen on that page they will publish message and you will get notification on your mobile so that is the same concept here we are using so you know that if there is any movement happen if there is any change happen on a device device will send message to gateway and what all are subscriber of that message that gateway will send message to those subscriber it can be you know that push notification it can send text message it can send mail mess mail so we can design as per our requirement but these are the possibilities which we can use so let's consider that I have this all the IoT devices which is M1, M2, MT and M4 so what they can do is they first register on my MQTT server so now they are registered officially registered and here on other hand let's say if I want to get messages or if I want to get updates from this M1 device so I will also register on gateway and I will say that I am interested to get update from M1 so let's say M1 is the one like electric device let's consider that it's a light bulb 
and now if it is going down I have configured my sensor that if it is going down send message to gateway that bulb is off so now this device will send message to this gateway that bulb is off and immediately gateway will send message to all the subscribers so I am subscriber for this so I will be getting message that bulb is off same way you know that I can also do actions from here now you know that I can also register to this gateway and I can say that I also want to send message that can you make bulb m1 on so I will sending that message and now this gateway will send message to m1 on that sensor and that sensor is configured in a way that once it will get message it will act accordingly so now it will start that bulb it will make it on so this is how you know that communication are done using MQTT server so you see that okay this is how we have like connected our devices and our gateway but now why this execution engine and why this rule engine is designed here so what we have designed is like we do not want to lose any data and we design this for smart energy meter so what we our intended is like if there is any change happen let's say currently it uses like 10 ampere and like 20 voltage so now if it changes from 20 to 21 or every second we want to get this data from our devices so our devices are continuously sending that electricity uses and those from all the devices so let's say we have thousand devices every second we are getting data from thousand devices to our gateway our gateway sending all the messages to our engine and now our engine is like storing this all the messages which we are getting in a row in a json format straight away we are storing this into our mongodb database and you know mongodb is very efficient in inserting data because it's a non sql database and for us we were getting data into json format and directly storing into mongodb so it was very efficient on storing data into mongodb now you know that let's say we also have given functionality to our users that they can also design rules it means you know that let's say if there is a ampere more than like uh, 20 or 30 i want to send a lot or i want to trigger something so we can configure that rule so you know that continuously when our gateway is sending data to our rule engine rule engine will check every message and if it satisfy any of our rule so what we can do is we can notify our user so our user will be given option that you want to get push notification you want to get text message or you want to get mail so accordingly our rule engine will work and we are also storing that output into sql so we are using sql server which is a relational database and relational database is really good on reading or and for analysis purpose so what we were doing is we were storing this all the relational data let's say user data or device configuration or let's say our user is using a mobile application so that mobile application configurations and their user credentials and those all things we were storing into mysql database so here there is a you know that combination of sql and mysql and we were also storing current status of any devices into sql so our application can directly go and read it from sql server while if they want to do a historical analysis from last 10 days month or year our query will go to non-sql mongodb and it will fetch all data and based on that they can do analysis so this is you know that combination of sql and non-sql which makes this application perfect and on a front end side we had our uh, angular js application so that application you know that can be accessed from desktop mobile or tablet and we have like use angular so that you know that it can be compatible with mobile devices and tablets and you know that what we have done is we have created apis for each and that was designed in our node.js so let's say if user details so for user we have separate api so for all the operations like for all the crowd operations we have separate apis and those apis can be accessed via this devices or via user in a secure mode so this is our basic design which we have followed for designing smart energy meter so now if i go next so you know that this is the way which i have used but now you know that if you go to uh, like uh, cloud and at the end once we design this we have deployed this on aws 
and we were we were using it from there if you want to have you know that at the end how this app was looking you can go to this video and you can explore this nowadays there are companies they are directly offering these services you know that we have used this MQTT instead of MQTT Apache Kafka which is you know that very famous now and it makes sure that messages are delivered 100% and there is a no failure in messaging uh, so that's why people are using Apache Kafka Azure is also providing this service so one of the Azure data engineering service which is Azure Event Hub which is device which is designed on top of Apache Kafka so we can also use Azure Event Hub for that purpose same way Azure IoT Hub so IoT Hub is you know that uh, if you want to design your sensors and configure from the scratch so IoT Hub is offering that same functionality and we can also use Azure IoT Hub for that if you want to use uh, Google Cloud Services, so they have Google Pop Sub. Same way, if you want to use AWS, so AWS is also having AWS Kinesis Streaming. And now, if you go down, so these are the you know that recommended design by Azure. If you are configuring uh, like uh, IoT device and if you are using it, so this is the you know that configured way they are proposing for aws also this is the way and for google you can if you are using google cloud services you can also follow this one i have implemented uh, azure design and what, what i was using is from devices we were directly getting data into event hub from event hub we were like uh, using stream analytics so stream analytics will be receiver for event hub and then stream analytics will have multiple endpoints where you know that if you want to directly store data into non sql server sql server in a file storage so there are multiple options available and once we have data available on this uh, databases we have multiple ui tools like power bi tableau which can connect to that database and we can visualize on reports also or we, we can also use this data for custom applications so these are the you know that iot basic designs we have if you have any questions on this uh, please uh, comment that and we'll discuss in more okay thanks for uh, watching this video and we'll see you in the next video thanks